<sighs> you know, one of these days I'm gonna get a proper microphone. This lapel thing isn't working too well with the beard. Have you guys attended any virtual events lately? I have. I've been to quite a few, actually, and they seem to be becoming more and more prolific as companies scramble to figure out to, what to do during the pandemic to get their messaging out to all of their end users. I mean, if you think about it, on average, there's a trade show just about every month, if not every other month at least, for some of these larger companies to go to. So what are they to do when there are stay-at-home restrictions in place? How do we move forward? Is virtual events the answer? That's what we're going to talk about today. What is up guys? My name is Nick Howell. I am the Data Center Dude and thank you for joining me here on this video today where we're going to talk about in-person events versus virtual events and my personal opinion on where things could go from here going forward. Before we get started, just wanted to let you know if you have any questions or feedback about this, leave them in the comments below or you can come find me on Twitch. A link down in the description below. I stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You can find all of those times over on my Twitch profile page. But thank you for following and come join me. Let me know what you think of the video or any other ones that you watch here on the channel. Let's talk about in-person events first. The big thing that always makes me smile when I go to an in-person event is the people. In fact, I'm gonna go so far as to say the events themselves would be absolutely nothing without the attendees and the presenters that put in the hard work to make the show what it is. Otherwise, you would just have an expo floor. Right? Would people still go to that? The presentations, the breakout sessions, the mega sessions, the keynotes, the labs, all of that stuff is what makes a valuable trade show. And here's the good news. All of that can be done online. We'll come back to that part in just a second, but let's talk about in-person trade shows. What, do, what happens outside of the show? The parties, the networking events, the friends just getting together. It's no secret that VMworld, amongst our V community, for the last 10 years has been more referenced as a family reunion of sorts for the entire V community. Because we all have all been on this journey together for so long, it feels like family. And when you're reconnected with them for three or four days, whether it's in Vegas or San Francisco or over in Europe, it just feels awesome. So the question comes down to, well, in the times that we're in now, how do we recreate that? How do we make that bond continue? How do we facilitate that? I'm sure you've all seen the, the rise of these Zoom calls that are happening, the Zoom happy hours, all of that. I have so many Zoom meeting, happy hour, hangout things on my calendar now, there's almost no time to do work. <laughs> so I, I have to make time for some of it for networking events, but at the same time, I want to. It's one of the reasons I built the Discord community is because I was starting to feel that detachment, that pulling away uh, for, for over the last few years. So if we bring everybody back together where they can all hang out and talk about maybe not necessarily work stuff, right? Isn't that one of the beauties? Sure, you can complain about your boss or rat rant about your company and things like that or some competitor. You get to do that at the bar or at the Chieftain or anything like that when we're normally at VMworld, but how do we do that now? We do that through communities, through bringing people together. And again, that's one of the reasons I built the Discord. I wanted to bring this group together. You guys can find a link to that down in the description below. It is growing. We have surpassed the 100 user mark, 100 member mark at this point. It's really budding. I really encourage everybody to come over and find it. Make sure you get that link down in the description below. Here's the negative thing about in-person events though. Cash, money, Moolah. The amount of money companies, sponsors, and everybody else put into putting on one of these events, from renting the Moscone Center to flying half of their entire staff to the other side of the world, is monumental. On an individual basis to fund their expo pass, hopefully they get a presenter pass for free, but to fund their expo pass, fly them around the world, rent them a hotel for a week, and then do all of the things like get them shirts and gear, do giveaways, make sure that there's TVs and computers and, I don't know, entire racks of gear shipped all around, the millions upon millions of dollars, and that doesn't even include the cost of being even a bronze sponsor for some of these events. So I get it, it's, it's a negative side effect, but it's one of those must-have evils if you're gonna be a big enterprise tech company 
in the modern era. You have to be present. You have to be, have a seat at the table. You have to be part of the conversation. I get it. So there is a bit of a silver lining here with the virtual events that are happening. Yes, as individuals, as attendees and presenters, it sucks that we don't get to hang out with our people and have our annual family reunions at some of these trade shows, but it's kind of a boon, if they think about it, for companies that aren't shelling out millions of dollars every other month to put on one of these trade shows. There's a tragic flaw in this whole situation, though, and we're going to talk about that because I want to go over virtual events. Virtual events are all the rage right now. As I was mentioning before, we have Zoom hangouts and you know beer bashes and after parties and just to keep everybody kind of connected. You, you might be doing it with your families, you might be doing it with your co-workers, with friends, all of that stuff. The problem though is that it's become so saturated that I really don't have time for all of them so I end up attending none of them. And it's funny how you can align that to trade shows. There's so many shows and expos happening throughout any given year now that you kind of have to become picky about which ones you attend. Or for that matter, you have to be picky about which one the company is gonna sponsor and have a presence at and staff and make t-shirts the list is endless. Anybody that's in events out there, you have my adoration and love. I could never do what you do. The logistics involved of doing what you do, monumental. My, my absolute hat tip to all of you out there that do events. But let's talk about virtual versions of this. Here's the thing that most companies and individuals are overlooking when they think about virtual events. They think that they can just throw a Zoom meeting together and bada bing bada boom, we've got an event. Kind of. It's not exactly the same. Here's the thing I love about it though. Everybody's remote, it costs almost no money, you have uh, in infinite accessibility to things like webcams, microphones, all of those kinds of things. Well, maybe not cam links and really nice. Any I'll come back to that. What we need to start thinking about for individuals is twofold. One, more people can attend for free. You can put it out on any given platform, be it YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn. Hell, we have a Twitch channel for NetApp now. The only other company I know doing that is AWS. But the point here is, is that don't think that just because you can't go do an in-person event at a trade show, you can't do events at all. It's not true. You can absolutely put on some kind of thing. There's two big pieces of it though, production and the production value of it and the end user guests and presenters. One of the big things that we take for granted right now is the quality of our gear that we have to do meetings. All of us are used to dialing in on our phones, not really turning on cameras. I've only seen that proliferate in the last couple of years where everybody's turning their cameras on now. Some of you that might have been in meetings with me might have seen my setup that looks kind of like a DJ booth, but that's a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of experience, and a hell of a lot of failures. The beauty of this is that it's kind of turnkey now. You can buy two or three pieces of kit, set up some software, and for less than $500 per person, you can be streaming 1080p HD in 60 frames per second for nothing. Want to see how I do it? I've got some kits pre-built for all of you over at kit.co slash Nick Howell, link down in the description below, but it is custom made for all of you to see what I recommend from a basic starter kit to a middle tier intermediate prosumer level, all the way up to everything that I'm using to facilitate my live streams and my video production here in the studio. So check those out if you're looking for some upgrades and quick ideas of what you should be looking at. Let's get back to the individuals, the attendees, the guests, etc. This is mostly to do with the people that will be on screen presenting. You need a good camera. It should be 60 frames per second, not 30. 30 frames per second is where you're gonna get that jittery kind of effect where it looks like you're moving around all of 60 frames per second is gonna be like this, where everything's nice and fluid and it's gonna be moving very nicely. Several cameras out there, anywhere from a Canon Handycam for 200 bucks all the way up to high-end DSLRs for $5,000. If you've got one already, hell, you may be good to go. You just need to have something to interface it with your computer, such as a Elgato Cam Link. Quick little capture card that you can throw into a USB port snap your camera into it, and all of a sudden your DSLR fancy camera, just like this one right here, is a webcam. And yes, it works in Zoom. And yes, WebEx, GoToMeeting, all, the, all of them. You, you can use it on all of them. My point here is, is that companies, I'm sorry, you don't get to have your cake and eat it too. I understand that you're now not dropping the millions of dollars on you know, doing all of these trade shows, 
But in order to replace that, especially for the presenters, you're going to have to fund some kind of replacement for gear. If you could figure out a way to give anybody that's gonna be presenting a budget of $500 to go out and buy a good, decent camera, a decent microphone, whatever cabling and mounting hardware they needed, plus ensure that they have a decent computer already, which they should if you're supplying those, then they're good to go. And the production value goes from two to 11, just like that. Now, I just got done today producing one uh, and engineering it in OBS. I'm gonna have a series of videos on hit the channel here to make sure that you guys know exactly how I did that and show you guys, but I'll show you a quick little screenshot here of the big panel discussion that we did, basically bringing in a bunch of participants from a Skype call, all bringing all of their audio, all of their video cameras in. We had a keynote presentation from Nigel Poulton. Uh, we had all kinds of stuff going on in this show, and I wanna show you guys how I did that so you, you companies, you individuals that wanna facilitate your own virtual events can learn from some of these mistakes. Well, we certainly found some limitations of it and we're working on those, but this is a great start that blows your typical Zoom meeting way out of the water. And I'm excited to share with you guys just how we did that in some follow-up things. Virtual events are awesome because you don't have to travel. Virtual events suck because people don't have the right gear. Virtual events are also bad because we don't get to directly interact and go have a beer and walk down Fifth Street in front of Moscone Center in San Francisco. We don't get to go to fancy restaurants and stuff with our team uh, to do those sort of bonding and networking style events. Yeah, that sucks. Are we gonna replace that with Zoom happy hours? No. Sorry. It's just not gonna happen. It is the way it is at this point. I, I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know what to tell you. You can have as many Zoom happy hours as you want. It, it's not gonna replace going to the Chieftain after VMworld. To close things out here with this video, I just want to be clear. I understand everything that is going on in the world right now is backing us into a corner, painting us into a corner, making us think outside the box. But the good news is we can do it. It's 2020. Technology has advanced far enough to where. We shouldn't really be doing webinars over PowerPoint slides with earbuds anymore, guys. Look at all of this. I'm no professional filmographer. I have a DSLR and I have a, I bought a $20 lav mic and I have a terrible softbox light and I've got some decent computers to, this isn't rocket science. It's not that hard to do. We just need, I feel like it comes down to either laziness or just pure ignorance and unawareness of this kind of thing that's available. We have to start doing things better because it, that's the only way it's going to grow. That's the only way we're going to persist these kinds of events is to get people upgraded. So if you're a company out there looking to put on a live event, stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel below because I've got some hot tips and walkthroughs on how I use OBS, Skype, uh, Discord, Zoom, and a tool called NDI from New Tech. Hat tip to New Tech for all of your stuff there. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I can't wait to show you guys how I did that. I am gonna be going through it live on Twitch tomorrow. Again, link down in the description below. Make sure you're following and got your notifications turned on there. I also do stream every Monday, Wednesday, as well as Friday. Uh, and make sure you subscribe to the channel here and got your notifications turned on so you can come and join us for the next video. Enjoy the rest of the videos on the channel. Come join us in our Discord. It is a very, very hot and up and coming tech community where we talk about anything from gaming to hardware to enterprise tech to even a place to share your content if you're looking to just do that and evangelize some of the solutions that you have out there. Take care guys, stay safe. Thank you to all of the nurses and healthcare staff and public servants that are out there doing what needs to be done right now. Very, very, very proud to see all of the work that you guys are doing. Thank you guys. Take care.